how to find buyers. These are the ones that I'm going to share with you guys. We're going to talk today about meetups, Facebook groups, Google search, property radar, investor lift, investor base, and relationships. We're going to hammer through these. So meetups, here's, here's a, a, a meetup group that myself and two other people run in central California. We have 8,500 members in this one Facebook group. We have monthly meetups that we, that we'll do and hold. Meetups are a great place to find people that are hungry, that are motivated, that are ready to dive into a deal. So you want to be very intentional going to meetups, talking to them, connecting with these different Facebook groups that are out there and uh, connecting with people, guys. It's really straightforward and obvious. Next on Google, this is like right in front of our faces. And I think we forget about this. If you're looking for a buyer, go to Google and say, we buy houses and the area you're looking for. I typed in Fresno for this. Type in sell my house fast and the city that you're in. You're going to see right at the top people that are spending money to to have their their marketing, to have their website shown right at the top of these searches. And some of these people are organically ranking at the top of these searches. Go call every single one of those, right? They have a website. They're going to have a contact number on there. Go talk to all those people. There's going to be some that are wholesalers, some that are, are investors and a combination. So I would go type into Google, go Go through the first three pages, you're going to find buyers right there in front of you. Using a tool like Property Radar, Deal Machine, right? You can build these lists out and a little tip when building the list. I think some people will shrink their list too small to look for just cash buyers, people that literally paid cash. Guys, I've almost done 700 deals and I've only paid cash for maybe four or five deals, like actual cash. And it's because I don't want to. I, I want to, to buy as many deals as possible. And I'm limited to the amount of cash that I have. But when I use other people's money, whether it's private money lenders or hard money lenders, technically there's infinite amount of deals that I can buy. So the most active buyers for the most part are using other people's money. They have a loan on the property. So searching for cash buyers is actually going to get rid of all those people, the people that are really active. So I just want to look for properties that have sold in the past 12 months that are with at or below the medium price point which is where I want to do deals and that bought in a corporation, put in the filter. What's the owner type corporate LLC. And that's going to show you people who bought with a company and people who buy in companies are intentionally investing. You might miss some mom and pops that are buying in, in their personal names, but you're going to get the lion's share of the buyers who are actively buying deals. This one right here, is investor lift. Investor lift, many people have heard of it. What I like about investor lift is it, it has a really great user interface to just show you kind of in front of your face who's actively buying deals around your subject property. And then you can start to add those buyers, right? You can start to skip trace and find those buyers and add them. Or if you want to pay for the premium, you know, version of investor lift, you can basically take everybody else's buyers that they've they've built and add it in there. And you kind of get a free buyers list that you get access to. And you can shortcut your process to marketing to those buyers. So investor lift will allow you to not only enter in your property and search for them, but it also has a disposition platform and marketing platform where you can then turn around and you can send out an email, send out a text blast to all those buyers that are in there that you've either added or that you're borrowing from someone else because you paid for it. Investor Base is a newer platform that I just caught on to. Really cool. It's less expensive than Investor Lift and it, it does pretty much one thing really well. Investor Lift has bells and whistles. Investor Base has, you know, one one bell or one whistle, whatever you want to call it, and it allows you to search your property and it shows you who is also buying around there. The one thing that it does really well is when you click on these people that bought, not only will it show you, you know, what they bought at and the different, you know, stats around that, it'll also show you their name and their their information. It has a built-in integration to go do all the searching for you for their phone numbers. And it's really accurate. It's not perfect. No, no system is perfect, but it's really accurate in doing the search for the owner's name, right? Because it's going to probably be bought in a company. It's going to search the public records for their name, skip trace their phone number, and then have it right there for you to call. So pretty sweet tool. And then last but not least is relationships. I, I branded my JV program. You've maybe heard of JVing deals. This is where you go to someone else who has a really good buyers list, who's really good at dispoing properties. And we built a really good reputation in Central California for having like the 
it top buyers list. And I still feel that we do. And, and we do a really great job at it. We've had so many people come to us, whether it was their first deal, their second deal, their 20th deal. We have worked with so many people in central California to help them sell their deals. And it started to become this thing. And it started to become really fun. And I started to say, man, I love sending friends money. And I would send a screenshot of a, you know, a wire for $40,000. Like we literally made $80,000 and I sent them a wire for 40 or we made $40,000. I paid pal them 20 grand and I would send screenshots. And I said, man, this is almost like friends with benefits. You know, like this is the real good friends with benefits. And so I made t-shirts. I made this, this whole thing about it and people loved it. And they they wanted to get a T-shirt and earn a T-shirt and uh, and it's really fun. So this is what we do for other people in Central California. We'll literally take your lead and we'll go even negotiate with the seller. We'll go on the appointment. We'll get the contract signed at the best price. We'll find the buyer, sell it at top dollar, handle the whole escrow process. That person gets paid more doing less work. There's other people out there that will do this and be happy to collaborate and, and work with you. There's so many different ways to win. So if you can find somebody who's a real player player in your area, it's a shortcut for you to, to be able to sell your deals. Next is the buyer script. When it comes to the buyer script, this is pretty straightforward. We want to ask the basic information. Now, the first question I like to ask this is a tall tale sign. If I'm dealing with an experienced seasoned buyer or someone just getting started and new, how long have you been investing? It's pretty straightforward. I like to know that question first, because if they're just getting started, that's great. But now I'm going to, I'm going to ask my questions maybe a little bit differently. If they've been investing for 10 years, that's great. I still don't know if they're very active or they're very good. I still have more questions to ask them, but it gives me context. So how long have you been investing? You just getting started. You've been investing a couple of years. Then I want to know what extra strategies they're interested in. I don't really care, but if they say they're wholesaling, then that tells me they're probably not buying. They're probably not buying deals. And so I, I, I want to have that person in my contact list. I want to stay connected with them. I want to do deals with them. I maybe want to send deals to them when I can't sell my deal and I don't have a buyer for it. And I want to collaborate with them, but I want to set them aside, right? So I want to know what extra strategies. Number of active deals? This is the next best question to ask. If they have no deals going on, well, that might mean they're not very active. If they have 20 deals going on, they're very active. This is going to give me more information. What type of buyer am I, am I working with? Then I want to know what kind of properties they're interested in, their ideal price range, typical properties. How do they buy their properties typically? Do they buy sight unseen? This one's important for me because I sell almost all of my deals sight unseen, believe it or not. And I'm going to get back to this point why later. And this is, this is going to be a very important part of how we do things. How soon can you close, right? If they just told me they, they buy cash, they can close quick. And then they say they need three weeks. I'm like, eh, why do you need three weeks? So this is all giving me good information here. And then this is, I'm definitely not going to read all this, but I need and want to set expectations on what it looks like to work with us. And what I mean by that is what you don't realize, guys, is when you have a deal, especially a good deal, you have the golden goose. You have what everybody wants. Everybody wants a deal. And your relationship with your buyers yes. needs to be one that they realize that you have the authority in this, this relationship. And, and just take a step back. This isn't to be, you know, arrogant. This isn't to be uh, with ego. This isn't to be rude. Um, this is about you realizing what you have. You have an opportunity that you're presenting on a silver platter for someone else to buy. And the reason I wanted to make sure to make that point to you guys is because oftentimes I will hear and see people say, man, I, I, I made $1,000 or $2,000. That's great, guys. And that's a, my first deal was 6,000 bucks. There's still deals to this day where we'll, we'll make a couple thousand bucks. That's completely okay. But you should be willing and able and confident enough to go make $100,000. When I I send my assignment contract and it says $100,000, like the one I just sent last week, I have my chest puffed out and, and confident in that. I'm not shy that I'm making $100,000 wholesaling the deal. And you shouldn't be because that should represent that you know what you're doing and you're going to reinvest that in and continue to bring more deals on a silver platter. And so I want to set the expectations with my buyers when I talk to them about what I expect out of them because they need to follow my process. This is my deal. I'm not hoping that they buy the deal. I know that I have a deal and there's going to be a lot of people 
people interested because I follow a process to make sure that it is a deal. And so they are the ones with the opportunity to buy our deals. So I just wanted to really hit that point, guys, because this is a this is a mindset thing. I'll see posts on Facebook. How much is enough money for, for a wholesaler to make? Oh, a wholesaler shouldn't make more than $2,500. They're not even buying the house. Guys, how much effort does it take to go find the deal, to negotiate the deal, to put the deal together? That's a lot of time, a lot of effort, and a lot of skill set. And I know for us, we invest a lot of money to find these deals. And because we do, we find a lot of deals, right? Jeff says a lot of hours. So we have an opportunity and we're bringing that on a silver platter for someone else. So I want to set the expectations, what I expect from them. And I'm going to summarize it by just saying, before we do a deal, you need to have done your due diligence. I'm not going to yes. sign the deal over to you until you've done your due diligence. And I call those my magic questions. So I'll make sure that they have, have they seen the pictures? Have they done a drive-by? Do they need a walkthrough? You know, are they paying cash? Are they using hard money? What are they doing to, to fund the deal? How quickly can they close? Close, and is there anything else they need to do before closing? I like to ask those questions because if I just assume it's a done deal, I'll rush to the deal and then they'll say, okay, great. When can I get a walkthrough? And Maybe there's no walkthrough available, or maybe that just, we weren't expecting the need to do that, right? Because we thought that they they said, yeah, I want the deal, let's do it. So setting clear expectations. Next is selling the deal. There's four things that buyers want to know when it comes to selling a deal. Uh, they want to know the address, they want to see pictures, they want to know the price, and they want to know the occupancy. Is it delivered vacant or does it come with a tenant? A serious investor does not need a, a novel or a story about this, this house and its past and what it could potentially be. A busy investor doesn't want to see all that noise. They want the facts. They want it quick. They want to make a quick decision. Most of the deals that I sell are sold in 10 minutes or less, oftentimes in minutes. Occasionally a deal will take longer to sell, but most of the deals sell in minutes because I've conditioned the buyers that this deal is going to sell really fast. So let's talk about that. When it comes to selling the deal, how do I get buyers paying top dollar and that are going to close fast? First off, and this is very important, we do a first come first serve basis. You guys have probably heard the saying that silly games get silly rewards. Look, I'm not here to play games with buyers. And, and why do I not want to play games with buyers? I have been a buyer where someone has said, here's the price. I jumped on it right away. I took action. I ran my numbers. I said, let's do the deal. I'm 100% ready to go. Here's my proof of funds. And they'll say, oh, okay, I'll get back to you on Friday. Can you give me your highest and best? I'm like, what are you talking about? You just told this is the price you said that you want. I said, I can do it. I can close quickly as fast as possible. And you're telling me I have to wait? No, I just wasted my time. So Having experienced that myself and having run our process where we do first come first serve, our buyers are paying top dollar. We're stretching our numbers, but they're selling fast. And it's not like, you know, the thousand people that I send my deals to that all thousand are reaching out. There's only a couple people reaching out, a handful. And those are the people that are the most serious that are going to pay top dollar and going to close fast. So I reward speed, first come, first serve. As part of that, how do I reinforce speed? I'm creating urgency and scarcity. Every time a buyer calls me, hey, what's going on? Did you want the deal? Now, what's hilarious as I'm saying that, I actually don't even answer my phone anymore. That sounds crazy to some of you. I don't answer my phone anymore. I forward their message and I say in a meeting, what's up? The standard template. Why? Because my phone's blowing up from a couple people and and they already know the deal. They know the deal is going to sell fast. I, I tell them that it sells fast. And guess what? When they, they reach out on the next deal and I tell them in a meeting, what's up? They're like, hey, is the deal available? Not, hey, I'm interested in the deal. Is the deal available? They know it goes fast. I tell them sold. Don't even give them a story. Sold, right? Sold. Sometimes they'll call and I'll just forward a message. I won't even say in a meeting. I'll just say sold. And all I'm doing is reinforcing that these deals are going to sell fast. And it's because it's happening. I'm not making these stories up. It's happening. And if I do answer the phone and they're like, Hey, uh, is it still available? Well, right now it, it is, but it's gonna, I mean, it's going to sell in the next couple of minutes. My phone's blown. Oh, see, look, I got another text here. Is it available? Did you have any questions? Do you have, okay. You're sure you want it. Okay. Let me ask you the magic questions. All right. So have you seen the property? You know, have you looked at the pictures? D did you need a walkthrough? So this is how I'm reinforcing deals selling fast and selling sight unseen. Cause when I get asked, Hey, can we get a walkthrough? I mean, you could, I could set up a, a walkthrough for you, but chances are it's going to sell before that. So, I mean, have you seen the pictures? Did you have any questions about the pictures? Have you run your numbers? Do you feel good about the numbers? Okay. 
So did you want it? Or did you just want to, did you want me to get back to the, you know, call this next person? And most of the time they'll take it. So these deals are selling fast because it's first come first serve. We are rewarding speed. We're creating urgency and scarcity. We're selling our deals most of the time sight unseen. And I'm always asking the magic questions. I just had a buyer say, why do you, why do you keep asking me? I'm like, Hey, I ask whether this is our first deal together, or this is our hundredth deal together. I want to ask because I don't want to be surprised. I want to make sure you need nothing else before we close this deal. That is our process when it comes to selling the deal. This takes, this also takes a ton of work off the plate for me. I'm not going and fishing for buyers. I'm not gathering offers and, and waiting around guys. We got deals to get through. We got deals to get through and sell. So we're not sitting here to play games with people, waste everybody's time, including our, ourselves. We're going to push our numbers for top dollar. We're going to find the buyers that are paying top dollar. And we're going to reward those buyers because they're going to keep coming back and they're going to want more deals. Thanks for listening to the Deal Machine Real Estate Investing Podcast. Please leave us a review and follow along wherever you're listening to your podcast.